Welcome back, folks. In this video, I am going to show you a puzzle, a DAX puzzle that will puzzle you. So why am I going to show you this puzzling puzzle? Well, <laughs> the reason is uh, there is a concept related to revisers, which is a little bit tricky. And hopefully by showing you this puzzle, it will make it a bit clearer, a bit clearer what the uh, tricky bit is and how you can learn and understand it in a way that makes sense to you, that doesn't feel like a bunch of heuristics. It actually feels like you understand, feels like you understand what's going on. So hey, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started with that, shall we? So I'm here in Filter Revisors Part 1.xlsx, and I'm in the Puzzle Prep tab. Uh, we're going to look at the actual puzzle in a second, but um, I basically decided that just showing it to you um, by itself was too mean, so I'm going to prepare you for it here for just a second, okay? So let's look at this snippet of code right here. Now, if I, I, we've got the calculate function, and we've got two arguments, and I've stripped away uh, the coloration of the code in here because I just want to focus on uh, the two arguments as, as sort of separate units, okay? Now, uh, what we're going to be learning is that argument one and argument two are fundamentally different. Now, uh, you may look at this and say to yourself, Brian, of course they're fundamentally different. Argument one is a sum x and argument two is a filter. Of course they're different. They're different snippets of code. Well, yeah, that's true. That's actually not what I'm getting at. Uh, what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at is here with the calculate function, it's also true of calculate table, right? Argument one is uh, an expression, specifically a, a scalar expression. Argument two is a value, specifically a table value. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, here with calculate, argument one is not going to get a value before it gets passed in. It's going to get passed in as an expression, as instructions, right? We give you the heuristic of freezing it, and that's a fine heuristic. That's a fine sort of way of remembering it. But what's really happening is this doesn't get evaluated before it gets passed in. It gets passed in as uh, instructions, as code as opposed to argument two, which is ex expecting a table value. So by contrast, this is going to get passed in as a value. This is going to get evaluated before it gets passed in. Now, if that's a little tricky, if that's a little tricky, it's supposed to be. It's, this is the whole puzzle section, right? Let's, uh, let's make this a bit more apparent by looking at this visually. And let's imagine, just for a second, uh, we're going to treat the calculate function as if it were sort of a, a single-celled organism, something like that, right? And if we do that, right, we can imagine we've got that same snippet of code right here. And here's the calculate function. It's this single-celled organism. Stuff's going to get pushed into it as arguments, and stuff's going to pop out of it. This is the result of running it, right? So let's think about what gets passed in, right? So uh, argument one of calculate is uh, expecting a scalar expression, a scalar expression, which is to say it's expecting instructions rather than a value. So if we look at this bit of code and this bit of code, both of these are expressions, right, as they are written out. Once I evaluate them or run the expression, it turns into a value. Because argument one is expecting an expression, this is already in the right form, right? So this, you know, hole right here in this cell wall, this gate, whatever you want to think of it as, this is uh, sort of uh, expression shaped. The only thing that could get passed in through this little gate uh, is an expression, is to say instructions. Therefore, this is already in the right format. So argument one is going to get passed in as an expression. It does not first get evaluated. So what ends up going into the calculate function is not the result of running this little snippet of code. It's the code itself. It's the instructions themselves, right? By contrast, argument two, and if we had you know uh, multiple overrides, arguments two, three, four, five. But here, in this case, argument two is expecting a table value, emphasis on value. It doesn't want an expression. It wants a value. Now, written out, this is an expression, right? But the calculate function, right, argument two is not expecting uh, another expression, it doesn't want one. It wants a value, specifically a table value. So to get through this gate, this hole in the cell wall, uh, we need to have a value. And this right here is not in the right format. Right now, this is an expression. So in order to get this bit into the calculate function, it must first be evaluated, must first be evaluated or converted from code, expression, into an actual value. Okay. So uh, this gets passed in as is, as is. This will first get a uh, run. So we go get all the dishes. We figure out which one equals pasta. That one equals pasta right there. We create the true row, and we get this temp table right here. So this bit of code gets converted to a temp table, and then the temp table, not the code, but the temp table gets passed in. Now, once it's in here, it runs about like we expect, right? The calculate function says, OK, I'm going to go uh, run this expression after I revise the filters. So the calculate function goes and gets the existing filter context, right? Existing filter context. And it takes this table that we gave it, right, as argument two, and adds it 
and adds it to the filter context to create a new revised filter context. And then, right, uh, dish equals pasta, there we go, it adds it. Then once this uh, new filter context is in place, well then, well then it takes the expression that got passed in as argument one and runs it, right? And if you want to think of it as unfreezing, it, that's just fine, but really it just takes the expression and runs it. And if I run this expression under these filters, well, I go get all the visible rows of many, and there's all the pasta rows right there because we're just looking at pasta. I add this column for each row, take the units and multiply it by the price per, price per. I get 14, 7, and 14. And I sum it up because it's a sum x function. I get 35, and it spits this out right here. Okay, So this bit of code produces this scalar, and that's just fine. The important part here is that argument 1, argument 1 is looking for an expression. So the instructions, right, the code, gets passed in as is, as opposed to argument two, uh, where it must first be evaluated before it gets passed in, which, 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 which brings us to the puzzle. You guys ready? Are you excited? Okay, let's look at this puzzle. Here's the puzzle right there. And there it is, right? Lines uh, seven through 16. There's the puzzle right there, right? So the puzzling part of this puzzling puzzle, right? Puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. The puzzling part of this puzzle is what I need you to do, what I need you to get good at, is uh, looking at a snippet of code like this and understanding uh, instantly, right off the bat, that argument one is fundamentally different than argument two. Wait, hold on, pause, Brian, what, what are you saying? Hold on, what do you mean argument one is different than argument two? I, I can look at this bit of code and this bit of code right there. Not only are they similar, they are the same, right? Right? They are the, exactly the same, character by character, letter by letter. This bit of code is exactly the same as this bit of code right here. So how can you tell me that this and this are fundamentally different? Well, when I mean fundamentally different, I mean as far as the calculate table function is concerned. Because just like calculate, just like calculate, right? Argument one is expecting an expression. This time, because it's calculate table as opposed to regular calculate, it's expecting a table expression, a bit of code that will return a table, right? Argument two, by contrast, is expecting a table value. It doesn't want instructions. It wants an actual table, right? So how, how can we visualize this? How can we understand this difference visually? Let's come down here. Again, we'll think of this as yet another single-celled organism. And I'll use this to get that just right. Ah, there we go. Much better. Okay. So... Same as before, right? We've got calculate table, and we've got, for argument one and argument two, we've written out the same bit of code. We've got the same you know, expression there and there. Uh, but calculate table, for argument one, it wants a table expression, and for argument two, it wants a table value. So argument one, this gate in the cell wall is expression-shaped. Only expressions can pass through. And argument two is a value shape, table value shape. Only table values can pass through. So even though we've written out the same code here as we've written out here, right? This is already in the right format, right? Argument one, it wants an expression, and this is an expression. So it doesn't have to do anything to it. It just takes that little block of code and just passes it right in there as a set of instructions, things that can be done, right? Things that can be evaluated, right? By contrast, for argument two, even though it's the same snippet of code, the, the gate here for argument two is value shaped. So this has to be converted into a value or evaluated before it can get passed in, right? So uh, similar to before, we go get all the dishes. Uh, we just keep the ones that are equal to salad. We get a true right there. And it keeps that true row and it evaluates to this temp table right here. So this bit of code evaluates to a temp table before it gets passed in. So even though we wrote the same thing here and here, the things that get passed in are different. Here we get an expression. And down here we get a table value. Okay. Now once uh, we're, we're through this part, it, it kind of behaves as we've looked at before. Right? The calculate table function being a revisor takes the existing filter context uh, and adds any override filters. Well, there's an override filter that we provided. It's a temp table, right? It's a table value, right? So it takes that dish equals salad and adds it to the filter context to create a new revised filter context. So this goes there, right? And now uh, once we have this new revised filter context, it could take the expression and run it. Now, if you want to think of it as unfreezing, that's just fine. But it, it takes the expression, the instructions, and runs them. Right? And so if we run this bit of code under these filters, well, what do we get? We go get all the visible dishes. And now, because we have a filter for dish equals salad, uh, we just get one. We just get dish equals salad, right? And for each row, we check to see if the dish is equal to salad. Well, uh, yeah, salad equals salad. That's a true. And we just keep uh, that temp table right there, which is what the whole block of code actually uh, spits out. Spits out. Now, um, so you may be asking, Brian, I 
does this have any business meaning? Why would I write a bit of code like this? You would never write a bit of code like this. But by me writing something that looks like this, where argument one and argument two are identical, I can force you to uh, understand and force you to think about the fact that uh, argument one of calculate table is going to be treated very, very differently than argument two. You have to get very good at when you look at looking at the calculate or calculate table functions and immediately understanding that argument one is an expression, right? It's an expression, not a value, right? Now, the heuristic that we use uh, throughout the rest of this chapter is imagining freezing it, and that's just fine. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. But um, the slightly more technical understanding of it is that this is an expression that gets passed in, not a value, which is why, which is why both calculate and calculate table have the counterintuitive behavior that uh, arguments 2 through you know n, arguments 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1,000, these get evaluated before the first argument does. The reason being, these have to get evaluated before they get passed in. This gets evaluated afterwards. So this happens second. And that is why you have that weird, weird behavior. OK, so hopefully throughout the uh, rest of these, th this chapter, you're going to get good. Uh, and frankly, the rest of your DAX career, you're going to get really good at looking at some code where you're using calculate or calculate table and immediately understanding that argument one uh, is an expression and, it, and you freeze it in your head because it's the last thing that gets evaluated. Okay, so I sure do hope that was helpful and I will see you next video.